What do you think about stable coins, by the way? Because what's interesting is Trump in his speech has essentially said that, hey, I don't mind Bitcoin and all this stuff is actually going to help the U.S. dollar. Right. Yeah. And I think stable coins are actually going to people are always talking about like when you were talking about bricks, I always think, oh, the U.S. dollar is coming to an end. I'm like, well, you know, crypto might actually be helping the U.S. dollar. And I think Nick Carter is the one who did some research on that and published a study how it's increasing demand for um, U.S. treasuries. And so the market is saying we actually want more dollars, which I just find fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it seems to go against what we generally see when we first flip on our, our social media, right? Uh, again, you know, it's the end of the world and, and you know, the dollar's going to hell in a handbasket. Um, but, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think generally speaking it is. You know, again, the, the U.S. dollar is the dirtiest, you know, the dirtiest shirt in the closet, basically. Um, or, or the cleanest shirt. Uh, yeah, the dirty yeah, shirt, cleanest right? shirt in the closet, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, it is what it is. People have been romanticizing the death of the dollar, you know, uh, at least since the 70s, since we got off the gold um, standard. Uh, you know, from the 1950s to the 1970s, we really had two competing reserve currencies. It was the U.S. dollar and it was gold. 1970s, gold take, you know, the dollar taken off that, the dollar becomes, the, you know, the thing. Um, you know, there's always the euro dollar market, which is this huge uh, market that most people don't understand and don't really know about. Uh, but basically, it's U.S. dollars held offshore. And so when banks have U.S. dollars offshore, they can, you know, again, do fractional reserve banking on those dollars, which increases the amount of that. So you know, there's a lot of demand for dollars, um, contrary to what people believe. Now, does that mean that the dollar is going, you know, like the DXY, which is the index we look at, the dollar, you know, weighted against, uh, you know, the other uh, majors, do we expect that to go, you know, I don't expect that to go up right now. I, I think it's in a downtrend. Um, you know, again, when we were about what 88. What does it mean in a downtrend mean? Does it mean there's less demand? What does that mean? Uh, it just means that that the dollar in, um, so so the DXY is a weighted index. And so it weights the dollar against, uh, well, it really, it, uh, I'm sorry, the Euro USD, the USD yen, um, the Great British Pound USD, you know, and so you've got these majors that are out there and it just weights the dollar in relation to those other pairs. Um, and so what we talk about when we talk about the DXY rolling down is we're talking about those other pairs gaining ground on it, you know, becoming more valuable against the dollar overall. Uh, but that doesn't. So inflation, like it, it does it measure inflation of the U.S. dollar in a sense or or the deflation, I guess, of other currencies? It's just yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it's a comparison of of how is the dollar doing versus those other currencies, rather than how is the dollar doing uh, against itself or against overall inflation or something like that. It's it's just it's that weighted average of. So if you look at it, you know, almost uh, between fifty and sixty percent of the value of the DXY is the Euro USD. Uh, you know, and so thirteen percent or so is the USD yen. So you know, it's a significant drop off there. And then you're getting down there, you know, to five percent and whatnot. Um, and so, you know, some currency pairs hold more value in that DXY um, pricing than others. And so all that means, again, is as the DXY comes down, it just means that the dollar in relation to the other currencies in general in that weighted index is pulling back. Um, but it doesn't mean that the dollar, you know, is all of a sudden below anybody or anything like that. As we talked about at the beginning, you know, earlier, 88% of uh International transactions are uh, use the USD, um, and that's that's currently that that's like within this last year. Um, and then, of course, as far as currency reserves go, FX currency reserves, USD is sixty percent. The second closest is the Euro USD, or I'm sorry, the Euro at around twenty percent. And then after that, they're all way down there. So, if you're worried about China, you know, its currency coming up there, it's actually fallen off the last uh, year or two. Now it's pulled back. In the grand scheme of things, it's like 4% or something uh, as it is. So there's a lot of work to do when people talk about hyperinflations tomorrow and, you know, and then the USD is not going to be the, the reserve currency. There's a lot of things that have to happen and they, it won't happen suddenly. It's just the, the system's too complex, too thrown together um, to do that. So whenever you go, oh, my God, all this debt printing here in the U.S. in relation to GDP, stuff like that. What people fail to do is go and look at, you know, the same thing in Japan, the same thing in uh, Europe, the same thing in the UK, the same thing. And, you know, and so they're just going, oh, my God, these big numbers here in the U.S. But you've got the same thing happening over in the other countries as well. So 
yeah, it's it's uh, it's easy to get caught up in the in the the very top soil level kind of look at yeah. things. Uh, the but headlines. Yeah, exactly. They're they're great talking points. They're great to get you know in uh, interaction online stuff like that. But um, they leave a lot out, a lot out that uh, you know th that's really important in understanding the whole thing. Well, Sam, in your title, you got rate cuts in the future. You want to discuss those? Yeah, today's the FOMC meeting, Chris. What's your prediction? Um, so, you know, we've been looking at it uh, likely being a no change this time around and then probably a 25 basis cut, uh, basis point cut there the next time in September. And so that's what I'm looking at uh, right now. You know, we're going to have that here in about an hour, I guess. And why do you, know. what's your logic behind that? Just, just briefly, why you uh, think well, cut today and then a cut in September? Yeah. So, you know, we've been flat for a while now. Uh, you know, inflation ran up to 9.3 or 9.6%. It's now down to 3%. People want to go, okay, well, why aren't my prices dropping? Well, because it's still inflation, right? It's still going up. It's going up at 3% though, versus nine plus percent uh, that it was two years ago. Um, so when we're looking at that, you know, we've had this great kind of decrease in inflation. Um, you know, everybody looks, talks about the CPI, but about 10 or 12 years ago, the Fed actually uh, changed to the um, PCE, which comes at the end of the month as their preferred inflation gauge. And that's continued to come down as well. We just had the recent one here um, last week, I guess it was, um, year over year, we're down. And so, you know, we've had inflation dropping, jobs, you know, whether you want to believe it or not, you got to kind of dig into the numbers and how the U.S. Uh, presents and where are the jobs coming from. Are they, you know, part time? Are they... Yeah, where are they coming from? Well, and, and that's the thing. Uh, a lot of them have actually been uh, moving from the higher paying, you know, more corporate jobs into the more, um, uh, you know, like like uh, servers and, and stuff like that. Uh, but you won't hear that. You'll just hear job growth and job creation. Right, right. And it, and it really depends where is it coming from. But at the end of the day, even at 4% where we're at right now, we are historically low. I, again, I've never... When we hit that 3.5% or whatnot a while back, I, I thought we'd have a pretty decent move back up because that's usually what happens. But we have stayed historically low for an unprecedented amount of time. And so when you look at that, uh, you know, and when the Fed's looking at that and then the Fed's looking at, um, you know, at inflation coming down, you know, it, well, there's no real reason to raise, uh, to raise rates. As a matter of fact, it starts giving them you know, some support for the idea that they're going to to uh, lower them. Now, the other thing we have coming up is obviously the election. And uh, usually when you're coming into the election, uh, you know, even though the Fed's supposed to be independent, we usually see some sort of uh, rate drop coming into it. Um, but, you know, again, 25 basis points is negligible. It's it's not really anything that's going to do anything. But, you know, it, it's, a, it's a discussion point. It's right. Oh, look, they cut rates. So, um, you know, when we kind of look at all that together, I think that I think that's where we're at um, as we come into it.